Hi, welcome to Lumi. This lesson is on the concepts of rank and nullity. For this part, we're still working with the concepts of subspace and dimension. Today we're looking at subspaces related to a matrix. For a matrix A, we define the row space, denoted by row of A, as the space formed by the linear combinations of the rows of that matrix. And we define the column space, denoted as col of A, as the subspace formed by the columns of that matrix A. A key concept here is called rank, which is the dimension of the row space or column space of a matrix A. And there is a special property here, and is that the row space and the column space have the same dimension always. Let's do a quick reminder. Each subspace has its basis, which is a set of linearly independent vectors that can span the subspace. The dimension of a subspace is simply the number of vectors in a basis. So as for our rank of a matrix, it would simply be the number of linearly independent columns or rows of a matrix. As for a quick example, look at the following. Here we have a two by three matrix. If we take its row space, it would simply be a sub the subspace spanned by the vectors one zero three and two one four, the rows of A. As for the column space, the same logic applies, and it would be the subspace spanned by the vectors one two, zero one, and three four. As for its rank, first note from the row space that the two vectors 103 and 214 are linearly independent and they span the subspace row of A. Therefore, they form a basis for the row of A. In conclusion, the rank of A is equal to 2. However, notice that the column of A is the span of three vectors. But if the rank of A is equal to two, then the dimension of the column of A must also be equal to two. That means that there is a redundant vector here. In other words, this is not a minimal spanning set. Now that we are familiar with row and column space, there is an important subspace related to a matrix. And this is something we have seen briefly in earlier videos, the null space. The null space for a matrix A, as you hopefully remember, is the subspace spanned by the set of vectors V that satisfy the equation A times V equal to zero. The nullity of a matrix is the dimension of the null space. For a quick example on finding the null space and nullity of a matrix, Look at our previous example. To find the null space, we need to solve the system of equations represented by a times v equal to zero. And we can do this by performing row operations to reduce our matrix into its reduced row echelon form. This gives us two conditions for vectors in our null space. First, x1 plus three times x3 is equal to zero. Second, x2 minus 2x3 is equal to 0. Writing this in the vector form, we have t times vector minus 3, 0 0.5, 1 as the solution, which is the subspace just spanned by the vector minus 3, 0 0.5, and 1, with a dimension of 1. Hence, the nullity of the matrix A is equal to 1. A key theorem in linear algebra connecting these concepts is called the rank nullity theorem. And it states that for an m times n matrix, or specifically a matrix with n columns, its rank plus its nullity must equal n, the number of its columns. This theorem is super useful since the number of columns is simply observable. And with that, 
If you know one of rank or nullity, you can very easily find the other. But why does this theorem work? Instead of a rigorous formal proof, let's see the logic behind it with an illustration. Remember that any matrix can be transformed into its reduced row echelon form. And in this form, we can categorize the variables represented by each column into two types. A leading one variable, if that column has a leading one in the reduced row echelon form. Or a free variable, if that column does not have a leading one. The number of leading variables is the rank, because those rows and columns with the leading variable represent the set of linearly independent rows or columns of that matrix. The number of free variables would be the nullity, as for each free variable would have one parameter in the solution, and thus adding one dimension to the null space. Let's see how this works in action. Here we have a 3 by 4 matrix, and we can reduce it to its reduced row echelon form. Here you notice that column 1 has a leading one, column 2 as well, and column 3 as well. What does that mean? That means the rank is equal to 3. On the other hand, you have one free variable corresponding to the last column. That means the nullity is equal to 1. Summary. Today we covered the notions of the subspaces row of A and column of A. Also, we covered the notions of rank of A and nullity of A. Moreover, we related those concepts through a key theorem, the rank nullity theorem. That theorem states that the rank of a matrix A plus its nullity is equal to the number of columns of A. And we saw a method to compute the rank of A. The rank of A is the number of leading ones in its reduced row echelon form matrix, and the null of A is the number of free variables in its reduced row echelon form matrix. This concludes our discussion on rank and nullity. See you next time.